Hello all, Scott Grove here. Had a lot of questions after my last video. A lot of people asking uh, things about um, ohms, um, resistance, you know, how many speakers you can plug into something. You know, if you have, um, you know, a 16 ohm speaker cabinet, 8 ohm cabinet, a 4 ohm cabinet, or if you have um, all this kind of stuff, what it all means. And do they do cabinets that are rated at different ohms sound different, you know, and so forth. So I'm going to try to demystify as much of this for you as I can right now without turning on anything other than my brain and explaining it to you in the simplest of terms. And this should uh, pacify most everybody. Okay, first of all, um, when you are talking um, guitar amplifiers, um, and this is going to lead to somewhere, trust me, and you are talking watts, you know, my amp is 100 watts. Okay, now if you go with a 100 watt tube amplifier, uh, let's just use Marshall because people know the name, okay? So you have a 100 watt Marshall tube head and you have a 100 watt crate solid state head. That 100 watt Marshall tube head will be about 8 to 10 times louder than that crate will, even though they're both 100 watts. Okay? Uh, why is that? Watts should be watts. Well, um, to say that tube wattage and solid state wattage are two different things um, is incorrect, but boy, when you listen to it, it sure sounds different, don't it? <laughs> okay, so just know that, yes, tube amps, when you are thinking in things such as watts, um, yes, they will be louder. Um, the whole concept of wattage is something that should not be used, honest to God, in musical, uh, in music period. It's just a very, very, very lame and very inaccurate way to measure anything. Okay, the thing um, you would actually want to go by, whether it be with um, guitar amps or um, especially sound systems, is your sensitivity. So when you're looking at a spec sheet and it says, you know, like this PA cabinet, you know, is um, 90, you know, rated sensitivity at 97 dB. That's decibels dB. That's not good, kids. That's your basic shit cabinet. Okay. So that's, you know, your Behringer cabinets, your, you know, whatever. It's just your low line uh, junk stuff that and there's a lot of lies, and I will tell you those lies right in just a second, because most everybody's using these lies, uh, especially when it comes to wattage. They're, they're screwing you all, so you got to know what to look for. So I'm here to help. Um, so you see a sensitivity that says like 137 dB when you get into good gear like uh, uh, EAW equipment before Mackie took over. Um, so when you get into the you know the heavy duty gear then you know that is some serious gear no matter what it's rated at wattage wise um, the decibel rating the sensitivity is what you are looking for not wattage wattage generally doesn't mean jack squat okay now that that's out there and you're more confused than ever okay let's talk since uh, guitar players are generally going to just stick with the whole wattage thing because that's what you're going to do no matter what I say, that's what you're going to stick to. Again, know that solid state amps, uh, when you are talking wattage, are going to be very, 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 very underpowered uh, wattage wise compared to the same amount of watts when you're talking tube amps. Okay? It's a whole different world. If you ask Scott, Scott, what, what amps do you like best, solid state or tube? 100% solid state for me from here till the day I die. Just reliable as all get out. They sound the same night after night. Tube amps sound different from night to night because the tubes are burning at a different temperature. 
from moment to moment, uh, one, two goes, you got to change them all then and there all at the same time. So, you, you know, better have a couple of hundred bucks in hand. No, you don't, you, don't, you don't just change the one that goes bad. You change them all or you're in for a heap of trouble. Um, do they sound better? No. Um, if you think they do, then I can't tell you otherwise. Um, yeah, they hiss a lot and they moan a lot. They pop and fart and crack a lot. But just because Jimmy Page used one and because Jimi Hendrix used anybody named Jimmy that had an amp, um, you all want to believe that it's going to sound better. But um, it's just not that way. Uh, you can get amazingly better sounds just plugged straight into a computer going through a piece of software and plugging directly into a board uh, than you can going through a big wall of Marshalls or what have you or Soldanos or uh, the best tube amps in the world. Um, it's just a matter of fact. So people just love the way though, they just love that old school way of being able to turn a guitar knob and get a little more crunch out of it. And some people love that interaction. I just don't fall, I don't get into that. I hate it. You know, other people love that. They love to be able to turn down a volume knob and have a little bit of tone go away and have a little bit of the distortion go away and then turn the knob back up and some more distortion comes back. I, I just hate that. I just, I don't like it. I'd rather just push a button and all my, every one of my digital things do what they do and, uh, I have a whole new sound, so that's where I'm at on that. But anyway, back to the actual thing. Yeah, I know, it's me and my lovely brain taking over again. Okay, ohms. Um, what is an ohm? It is a measurement of resistance. Okay, so um, that's it in its simplicity. Uh, and what does it mean to you? Here's what it means to you um, without all the scientific bullcrap. Okay. Um, Simply your amp will state on the back of it, next to the speaker outputs, um, what its minimum rating is that you can go down to as far as ohms. It will say a minimum of 4 ohms. Okay, So that you know you can pile on as many speakers as you want until you reach 4 ohms minimum. But what the hell does that mean? And is it good? Is it bad to do all that? Let's talk about it. Okay. So, let's go with the standard of, uh, we'll, we'll do two standards. We'll do uh, Marshall amplifiers and then we'll do all the rest. How's that? Okay. Just because some people, I don't know why they hold Marshall to be the standard of what all other amps are measured by because you'll find more Marshalls on a workbench than you will on a stage. You know, you'll see them on a stage, but they may not be working. People actually be plugged in through, you know, a fender or something to, because they know it'll be working and it'll be a solid state. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get, of course I get letters. I'm controversial, that's what it's about. But, okay, so you have a 100 watt Marshall head and it is allowed to go down to four ohms minimum. So what does this mean for you? Okay, with Marshall cabinets of long ago, and we'll talk about modern ones too, Generally, all Marshall cabinets way back when were 16 ohm cabinets, meant they had four 25 watt Celestian Greenback 25 watt speakers in them, and each speaker was 16 watts, and they're wired so that the whole cabinet still stays at 16 ohms. You know, normally if you were to put a 16 ohm speaker and another 16 ohm speaker, another one, and another one, and they were each in individual cabinets, or wired another way, that 16 and 16, the two first two speakers, would bring it down to 8 ohms, half of what it was. And the other bottom, 16 and 16 together, into 8 ohms, so you get to 8 and 8 together, and that brings the whole cabinet down to 4 ohms. That still is available these days. You can buy a Marshall cabinet with a switch on the back, it will switch it from series to parallel wiring, which will take the cabinet, make it a 16 ohm cabinet, or you can make it into stereo dual 8 ohm cabinets so you have two 16s and two 16s wired together so you have an 8 ohm and an 8 ohm load but you can run them in stereo Ooh, or but just for um, the different configurations I'm getting ready to tell you or you can run the whole cabinet in 4 ohms is there a method to this madness? yes of course and that's this whole thing so again let's start at the beginning you have an 8 ohm I'm sorry a 100 watt 
um, Marshall head that is allowed to go down to four ohms minimum. Okay, so back in the old days again, you have the four speakers that are each 16 ohms, and the whole cabinet as a whole is a 16 ohm cabinet. Okay, so you are allowed to run four of those cabinets off of one head, and that will take you down to the four ohm minimum that the head is allowed to run at. Okay, so you have a 16 ohm cabinet, has four speakers in it, but it is wired, you know, in the way that it still retains the 16 ohm rating. The ohm again is just a measure of resistance. That doesn't matter to you what the resistance is. It's a, resistance is a matter of if your um, speaker cables are this big around or if they are as big around as a pick, toothpick. Uh, that's resistance. That's how much, how hard it is for the power to get through to something. So it's that kind of thing. It's nothing that you need to actually learn. You can Google it at any time. You can Google this and probably learn it faster than I'm going to tell you, but I'm trying to make it simple. Um, so you have the capability now of your 100 watt Marshall head powering four big Marshall 412 cabinets. They're all at 16 ohms each. So you're 16 plus you're 16, so you got two slanted top cabinets. Kind of like what you see over here. I've got, let's say these are 412 cabinets, okay? You've got two full stacks of Marshalls here. Okay, the black, black set and the white set. Let's say they're both 412 cabinets. So you've got 16 ohms here and 16 ohms here. That together is 8 ohms. You can run that, you know, out of one set of, uh, you could jump them one off to the other. It doesn't matter how you connect them. Okay, they're always going to be what's called parallel jacks in the back, so it's got two places to plug it in. It doesn't matter which one you plug into, they're the same. Uh, you'll see cabinets that says in and out. It doesn't matter. You can plug it in. It doesn't matter. They are both the same. They're identical. Why they don't, they're just wasting ink by writing in and out. So, you got 16 ohms plus 16 ohms. Okay, so now you're down to 8 ohms. Okay, then out of the next speaker output of your jack, you're going to run the bottom two cabinets together. Another 16 ohms, another 16 ohms, that's down to 8 ohms. So now you've got the entire head up here, just one head working, okay? Not three like I've got up here, but let's just do this. Okay, so you've got one head running all four cabinets, okay? So now you're allowed to do that, and your amp says that it is safe to run a 16 ohm load. Oh, okay, a four, sorry, a four ohm load at 100 watts, of course, so it's going to deliver 100 watts into all four cabinets total. So the amp can only put out 100 watts of juice, but it's putting it into all four cabinets, right? Okay, so now you're down to four ohms, and that's as many cabinets as you're allowed. Anything else, and you're going to fry the amplifier head. You will not fry the speakers, you will fry the head because it just simply cannot go any lower. You cannot take it down to two ohms by taking four more cabinets and throwing it on there, or even one more cabinet. Okay, so that's where you're stuck at. Okay, so that's what we got. Let's get out of here and show my beautiful face again. Okay, so you have now your amplifier 100 watts going into 16 speakers. Okay, Okay, remember again, we were running uh, 25 watt speakers in all these cabinets because that's what all the old Marshall cabinets ran. Again, was the 25 watt greenbacks. Okay, now what is happening is, okay, this is perfectly safe. You know, this is what they were designed for. Um, people run the other head up there on top of the cabinet, like this one over here, as a backup generally. Uh, you'll see four cabinets there, whether they're plugged in or not. Most people generally in this situation will just run the top two cabinets together, not run all four, you know, because you're only going to hear these. These are just blasting away at your feet and doing nothing unless you are in an arena and then you are, you know, 40 feet in front of them. Then you might actually hear the bottom cabinets too. Okay, but that actually is informative as well. Um, so what's happening is the 100 watts is being evenly distributed now between 16 speakers. So each of those 25 watt speakers is receiving 6.25 watts. Okay? So, that should start to tell you something. 
some people really love the sound and this is what you know with Celestian speakers especially people with the, love their tube amps and love the whole Marshall setup and the whole tube amp thing and you know the turning down of the volume and making it on your guitar and making it clean up and then getting it more distorted as you turn the volume up the people who are living in that world who love it there and that's fine that's groovy whatever works for you um, people have been doing it for eons and they will continue to do it it's just not my thing is all um, it's not that it's wrong in any way shape or form whatever gets you through the day gets you know more hits have been made probably on that kind of stuff than my kind of stuff um, so those kind of people and that kind of thinking, those people really like the sound of a 25 watt speaker, those 25 watt greenbacks, they'll pay hundreds of dollars per speaker for the vintage ones that are biodegrading as we speak and moth holes in them and that kind of stuff. But they like those speakers to be receiving 25 watts or more, okay? They like those speakers to just be just almost ready to come undone and on the edge of blowing up. That is the sound. Okay? So, are you getting the sound by only putting 6.25 watts into a 25 watt speaker? No. Um, you're barely making that speaker do any work at all and it's not going to give you that sound. The Hendrix sound or whatever. So, you got to think to yourself well, sales, <laughs> what do I do? Um, before I go there, the thing that is happening though is that you are moving a lot of air. With, tw with the, the 16 speakers all moving at the same time, you have got this wall of physical air that you are moving. Okay, now that um, in and of itself is an impressive thing and you can take one speaker that is a 4 ohm speaker okay they're everywhere uh, you can buy one 12 inch speaker that's 4 ohms and run that 100 watts through it and have it be a 100 watt speaker at 4 ohm rating and run that amp wide open through there and it will rip it up but it will sound wimpy compared to what you're doing over here with 16 speakers moving all that air okay if you have that one speaker handling all that um, wattage all that power okay coming out of there and cranked it will basically sound like a transistor radio a little AM radio a boombox even sitting in the middle of a football field you know on Super Bowl Sunday when everybody's there but then when you have a wall of Marshall's ticking with the same hundred watts but going through 16 speakers even though each speaker is only getting six point whatever watts it is moving air so it is actually going to hit people's ears whereas that little tiny speaker is just moving this little bitty bit of air so it's going to sound like a mosquito fart compared to a lion's roar I know it's it's a hard call to make of which way to go if you're playing in a small club best thing to do is go with the one speaker you know, um, whenever you can get away with one speaker and do a gig, that's the way to go, kids. You know, it's just unless you're just looking for the look. Okay, so if you are running, let's say, let's go to half that stack. Okay, so let's pull away two of these cabinets. We're just going to concentrate strictly on the white stack now and say these are still 412 cabinets. They are still the same 412 cabinets. So now we still got 100 watts, but now we're only running at 8 ohms. Okay, because we got a 16 ohm and 16 ohm. So that's what happens is they actually just cut each other in half. So you never, ever, 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 ever want to mix um, ohm rated cabinets. So you do not want an 8 ohm cabinet and then a 4 ohm cabinet. You do not want a 16 ohm cabinet and a 4 ohm cabinet okay it's that you don't want to mix these things together it's just not a good thing so never do that okay um you're like why it's like because it's just it's not a good thing it's um 
for sake of argument, let's just say don't. <laughs> um, okay, so you got 100 watts going into eight speakers now and at eight ohms. So each speaker is getting, you know, 12 and a half watts each. It's like, well, hell, that still isn't doing what I want. Okay, so that is why um, so many people love the sound of a half stack. So one head and just the top cabinet. Okay, because you're getting 25 watts of pure tube power to each of the four speakers. Okay, and it's still at 16 ohms. Okay, and I'll explain something else here in a minute because uh, the amp actually does deliver different volumes or what are actually different wattage ratings as you change ohms. Okay, this is where it gets screwy. Okay, so for right now, let's cut it all the way down to you're using a 100 watt head into a 16 ohm cabinet with four 12 inch speakers. So let's say your Marshall head is rated at 100 watts RMS that's another big one. I will discuss this. I'll try to cram it all in. Um, RMS has a whole different kind of rating. It's the worst rating you can use. Um, but then again, for guitar players, it's the best rating that you can go by. Because people are fooling you out there. Again, Behringer and PVs go into it too, and they're screwing you guys big time on their advertisements of what their wattage is. They're lying to you on every single spec sheet. So you think you're getting a 100-watt amp, you're getting probably a 25-watt amp most likely these days. Um, okay, so now you've got 100 watts going through here, 25 watts per speaker, each speaker is able to handle 25 watts, so now you get that sound. Okay, so this is where you'll actually get people who use what you're seeing right here. They will actually run two heads and use two cabinets. Okay, so you'll go right from one input of one amp, you know, your guitar goes, plugs in here, and you'll run another cable from the other input up to the one input up here, and just run the two amps identical, you know, and um, just run one cabinet per head, and it will give the full stack that sound. So 100 watts going, so you have 25 watts per speaker, top and bottom. Then you've got that sound. Those speakers are just ticking right on the edge of wanting to do, especially for the hard rock stuff, they're just they're wanting to come apart. That is that sound. That's what a stack is meant for. Okay, um, so you got to think this out. It's like, okay, now I am truly delivering 100 watts, 25 watts, 25 watts, 25 watts, 25 watts, 25 watts into 25 watt speakers. So they are barely able to handle that and not much more. But that's the sound you want. You want the sound of that, if that's what you're into. That's what's going to make that sound that way, not putting a whole bunch of cabinets together. Because then, yeah, it's going to be pushing a lot more air, but it's going to be a lot wimpier sounding. Okay, so you're looking for that sound. Um, what is it that makes it so loud out front? You're micing it through the PA. Okay, any amplifier is for you and you only to hear. Anybody else in your band or on the stage, um, even, it don't matter whether it's Kiss or The Who or... Uh, Dean Martin or who it is, if they want to hear the guitars um, in a, on stage, they have to put it through their PA monitors or in their earphone, you know, pieces. Um, this is not for them to hear. Um, this is for you to hear. Nobody in the audience is ever going to hear your amplifier unless they're on the front row and they can't even hear the PA, so then they're going to hear your amp. But um, that's not the deal. That is for you to hear. This is for nobody but you to hear. So for you to get that sound to the microphone is the most important thing. So if you need to get that sound that we're talking about, that speaker just getting ready, like the magnets getting ready to fall off the back of the sun bitch, then that is the only way to get that sound with a Marshall amplifier is to get the head going through one cabinet delivering all 100 watts um, into that 16 ohm load um, and not adding anything else into it and just diamond it out run it on 10 and then add another head add another cabinet so one head per cabinet you have that sound okay 
So that is that. That's how you get that sound. Now, um, there are the heads that are 200 watts. I've got a 250 watt head back here. Um, then of course, yeah, you can start running more cabinets off of one head. Then you bring it down to, because you're going to have to. <laughs> okay, let's say you have a 200 watt head. Marshall makes plenty of them. And I'm not just talking about anything. I'm just talking about Marshall just strictly as a guideline. I don't like them at all. There's nothing about Marshall I like what, at, at all. Nothing. Um, so I'm not trying to do a plug for them. So I will say just the opposite because I hate them, if you must know the truth. Um, so you have a 200 watt Marshall head. Yeah, you can go ahead and now run two cabinets. And now it will be down to 8 ohms, but so now you can run all four cabinets with two heads instead of just one head per cabinet instead of having to run four heads for four cabinets. So now you can run the other way and still get that same ratio. So you're getting, you know, 100 watts into this cabinet, 100 watts into that cabinet from one head. Then that head is 100 watts here and 100 watts down there. And you're still getting that bone crushing maximum of 25 watts per each 25 watt speaker. Okay. So that's that. Okay, now for the rest of it, I know we're running long and that's what I do. I love to ramble, so I do. Um, to make you understand what ohms are from here on out, again, if you have, um, let's talk about uh, just PA cabinets for just a second so it'll make sense to you, okay? Um, let's say you have a 200 watt powered PA head. Or mixer you know it's got to build in power into the mixing board okay you've got two speakers to run for your PA system okay there's one sitting on a pole over here one sitting on a pole over here and let's let's say those um, speakers are you know they're able to handle 300 watts each that's fine groovy whatever and each cabinet generally and PA systems um, as far as people on a budget level most cabinets are going to be 8 ohm cabinets so 8 ohm speakers over here 1 8 ohm speaker over here okay so your PA system says it says it not that it is okay that it puts out 200 watts at 8 ohms okay thing is you are not running 8 ohms you're running 4 ohms because you have an 8 ohm cabinet over here you have an 8 ohm cabinet over here even though they're both ran into the back and two separate outputs, um, still the total sum now is 8 ohms and 8 ohms. It just cuts it in half, so now it's a total of 4. Yes, everything goes backwards. It does not go forwards. Okay, so you have 8 and 8. They divide themselves into half, so now it becomes down to 4. Okay, and generally your PA is only comfortable at running at 4 ohms minimum. So you can't add any more cabinets. That's it. That's all you can run. You can run four ohms. That's it. So you can't add any more cabinets ever. Okay, so it's only able to do that. Okay. So you got a 200 watt head, PA head, going into two 300 watt, who cares, cabinets. Um, and you have four ohms total now. Okay. But here's what happens. That 200 watt head, if it actually is 200 watts RMS, that's a musical rating. Um, 200 watts RMS. Okay, so it's putting a what? How many watts into each speaker? Um, this is where it gets funky because you'll be wrong whatever you just answered. Uh, because it's not delivering 200 watts anymore. It's actually tossing out about 375 watts. Okay, you will notice on every, every, every piece of musical equipment. There is not just one rating for everything. As you change ohms or your resistance, the wattage that comes out does fluctuate. Okay, so the lower the rating drops, okay, we went from 8 ohm cabinet, okay, it will put out 200 watts into that one 8 ohm cabinet. But now you've added another cabinet that's 8 ohms, so now it's 4 ohms, and you will see another rating in your manual that tells you that now your PA will actually run at 375 watts at 4 ohms, okay? But 
that speaker over there is no longer getting 200 watts, is it? Okay, if you thought about it before, okay, if you just ran one speaker into 8 ohms at a 200 watt head, okay, it puts out 200 watts at 8 ohms, you run it over there, it's putting 200 watts on that 8 ohm cabinet. Okay, now you add another 8 ohm cabinet, now it's down to 4 ohms, but now the PA head automatically is just the nature of the beast. Um, when you reduce the um, ohms, the amp does put out more power. Same with your guitar amps. Wow, blow my mind. Okay, so this will um, open up some doors for a lot of you, I think. Okay, so now you've got 375 watts going into two cabinets, so each cabinet's not quite receiving that 200 watts anymore. If it went to 400 watts, then each one would still be getting, but it never quite doubles. Okay, so now that cabinet over there that was receiving 200 watts is now, you know, getting 180-ish or 182 and a half watts, you know, but it's going to sound louder because now you're pushing more air because you have two speaker cabinets and it's physically putting out more air than that one, so it will sound louder and it will sound clearer. Um, because it's just not one speaker over there just straining to put out to all this stuff. Now you've got two speakers that are working less hard to put out the same amount of sound. Okay, hope that makes sense to you. Um, when I go do gigs, of course I run tons of cabinets. And it's, it's, the, it's all about, especially with PA stuff, it's the amount of air you can move. So. Um, I always use at least four cabinets at the smallest gigs, you know, so I have um, systems that will do um, four ohms per channel output. So that's left, the left side and the right side, each will go down to four ohms. So you have to buy your gear accordingly to your needs. And I always need like four speakers because I have to have, I put two speakers on a PA stand on each side. Some will point this way, some point that way. I have an adapter up there so that one can point behind me if I'm playing fairs and stuff and I have to, people want it behind me want to hear, people in front of me or the sides, tables over there. So I always run four ohms on this side, four ohms on that side. Okay, so um, that means you actually read the specs and it says that your PA mixer in stereo will run at 375 watts RMS at four ohms stereo per side. So you can actually run an eight ohm and an eight ohm on that side, and an eight ohm and an eight ohm on that side. So it has two different power amps built in. Some amps are that way, they have two different power amps built in. So you have to look at these things. Okay, so with that said, guitar amps, everything changes. Um, you have to read the specs. A Marshall 100 watt head, okay, back to that, that is running 100 watts, does it put out more wattage when the uh, ohms drop or the resistance drops? Yes, it puts out more power, okay, it just, uh, so you have to look up what does that particular model that you have put out and See, that's why you're not actually getting the 6.25 watts per speaker cabinet. If I said you're running four speaker cabinets off of one head, you're getting more than that because now the amp is actually delivering a lot more power. Okay, so you have to look up those things and then remember not to um, blow up your stuff, you know, but see what the actual wattage um, output is at each ohmage rating. So see what it is at 16 ohms, how much power, how many watts, RMS, not continuous. Okay, I have to do this right now. Everybody is screwing you up the butt with the wattage thing. Um, RMS is what guitar players ratings are that you want to follow even though this is the, one of the crappiest rating systems there is in the world. Um, but this is what people go by, guitar players. Anyway, not that we're people, we're, we're sick individuals. And we're not meant to be tech heads, but I am. So, so be it, so I'm here to take you home and deliver you to the promised land. Um, so you've got a cup of tea. 
<sighs> okay, so you've got your um, 100 watts going into your 116 ohm cabinet. Read your, keep your data sheet, don't just throw it away. This is very important. But now you can look it up and print it anytime. So print one and get used to learning this. Look at how much it actually puts out power wise RMS at 8 ohms at 4 ohms okay because it will be a different amount of wattage that it delivers so check that out okay um, but people are advertising uh, especially Behringer and now PV has gotten into the game and so forth okay where it used to be a hundred watt amp okay now they're advertising that it is an 800 watt amplifier can they do that yeah they can advertise that why because it's true okay that 800 watts is peak power okay is what they call it or it'll say 400 watts continuous okay don't listen to anything other than rms ratings okay um you will see this advertised everywhere guitar center musicians friend uh everywhere look at that rating um find out because they may not tell you flat out um especially this behringer crap um I mean, it's good disposable gear. I won't fault Behringer for nothing, but it's, it's, I can't say it's false advertising either because these numbers are real numbers. They are stating that it puts out 400 or 800 watts, new 800 watt PA head, when it actually only puts out 100 watts RMS. So it's not a loud amp at all. It's just a little bitty, and uh, that's a 100 watt solid state, so you know that ain't much. Okay, but they're advertising 800 watts, which sounds huge. But that's 800 watts peak. That means it can deliver one note with 800 watts to it. Okay, and that's a very deceiving thing. It cannot deliver that all all around. It gives you, a, it'll deliver an 800 watt feedback noise. It'll blow up all your speakers in a quick second. But don't think about that. Look at the RMS watt, RMS rating only, not continuous, not program, not peak nothing but RMS matters okay so 90% of the gear advertised today as of again I have to put this because this will be on the internet forever until we blow up the world um, this is 2012 this is August 24th I guess probably by now my dad's birthday of 2012 uh, as of right now I'm probably 90% of everything being advertised on the internet is in peak power so if you say 800 watts, no, it's not. If it seems too loud to be true, it is too loud to be true. Um, and don't use program ratings, which is the same as continuous. Uh, it's just another way of screwing you out of another rating. Use the RMS rating only that you'll get you back down to your real 100 watt thing that you are all used to dealing with and used to seeing. But everybody now is cleared for takeoff to put these outrageous amounts of wattage on there which are not what you're looking for so these are peak ratings again and I can't stress that enough um, that is being used in every form of advertisement okay uh, Marshall will be next will be advertising you know 800 watt amplifiers when they're actually you know 200 watt amps or whatever but they are allowed to advertise that because it can hit 800 watts peak for just one moment in its entire life and they can advertise that but continual rms actual real music system power here um no that's not what rms stands for but and again this is rms is a shitty way to rate things it's just an old system that's just horrible but beware 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 of that that is so um crazy everybody thinks they have 800 watt amplifiers and they don't Look on the back of any amplifier you have to. This is where everybody screws up. This is a 12 watt, in actuality, this is the lead 12. It's a 12 watt solid state amp on the back. It'll say something like 85 watts. Okay, and people will advertise that on eBay as an 85 watt Marshall head. No, it's a 12 watt solid state head, but it draws 85 watts from the wall. So they think it's an 85 watt amp. So people are just that dumb. They just don't get it. And I don't want you to be that dumb either. So please read your spec sheet and know how to read it. Hopefully this will help you. Okay. 
So it's just your actual output, not your input. The 85 watts is what it draws from the wall socket on your amp, or you know, on the wall socket on your house and into the amp. It takes 85 watts to deliver 12 watts of musical power to your speaker. So don't fall for all this crap. Okay, back to ohms. I know it's a long, I, my videos are too damn long, I can't stop it. I can't stop myself, damn it. Okay, so just know again, okay, like my Johnson amps over here. Um, I told somebody you can never see them. There's, um, hell, there's one here, there's another one on top of it, and then there's a 250 watt head on top of it behind my keyboards here. And then I've got four more of these amps out in the garage, and then a couple of their 412 cabinets out there also. Okay, now these are actually 150 watts RMS, which is 75 watts per side. Okay, and that is at 8 ohms. Okay, so it has two speakers in it. Okay, it has two Celestion 70 watt speakers in it. And this is in stereo, so these are stereo processed amps. So again, 75 watts RMS over there, 75 watts RMS over here, and it has two 70 watt speakers in it. Okay, which is fine. Okay, so you you can get that natural breakup if you got the amp running it wide open. You know, I'm never going to do it because I don't need it. But and then there's the 250 watt version head. Okay, and then also on the back it has a place next to each speaker uh, jack that I can run one more speaker off of. So I can run another 8 ohm cabinet off of one side and another 8 ohm cabinet off the other side which will bring it down to 4 ohms per side. That cabinet can be in the form of one speaker being at one 8 ohm speaker or it can be one cabinet with four 8 ohm speakers in it but still wired so that the whole cabinet is 8 ohms. So I can run two more 412 cabinets off of that amp as long as they're both an 8 ohm speaker or an 8 ohm rating and another 8 ohm rating. Okay, I'm just not mixing and matching ratings. I'm not running, you know, a 4 ohm cabinet and then a 2 ohm cabinet and whatever. So I'm keeping with 8 ohms and 8 ohms. So that's an 8 ohm speaker, that's an 8 ohm speaker. So it is in stereo. It has two amps in here. It's just not one amplifier. It is two totally independent separate amplifiers. So I am putting 75 watts RMS through that speaker. I am putting 75 watts RMS through that speaker while they are at 8 ohms. Okay. Now when I actually bump this sucker up or down to 4 ohms by adding another 8 ohm speaker or another 8 ohm load Okay, they will call it that, a load. Okay, because that's what it is. You are loading the cabinet, or loading the output jack now with another 8 ohm load. Whether that load be in the form of one speaker or in the form of one more cabinet that can, is actually four speakers that total 8 ohms in it. So it's just another 8 ohms and 8 ohms. So now I have four ohms on that side and four ohms on that side because I just hooked up an 8 ohm cabinet over there and an 8 ohm cabinet, plus I'm using the 8 ohm speaker as a neat side. So, but now, actually, that 150 total watts, 75 and 75, actually goes up not to quite double. So now my amp actually becomes um, about a 200 and, about a 250 watt amp. From 150 to 250, it doesn't quite go to 300, but it will go to about 250 watts RMS at 4 ohms per side. Okay? So that's what it becomes. Um, so it does put out more power, but that will actually give each speaker less power per speaker because you're now depriving that, because we were 5 watts over, 75 watts into a 70 watt speaker. It will not be receiving now 70 watts. It will be receiving less than that because we just less than doubled our power, but added 4 more speakers over So now it's given 5 speakers something now, so now each one is getting like 30 watts each, so you have to think through if you want that overdriven speaker sound or what, you know, because two amps will act different than solid state amps. These amps down here have two 12AX7 preamp tubes, which mean nothing other than it will give you that tube sound, you know, as far as your gain and all that, but as far as power amp section, uh, tube power sounds louder than solid state power. So this has a solid state um, power section. 
Okay, so it's digital effects in there. Solid state power output, but tube preamps. So it's three amps, three amps, three amps and one. Okay, I love those things, by the way, as you all know. Okay, so that's kind of it. Um, are you more confused than ever? You should be. Let's see if I can uh, put it into a summary that will last 15 minutes or less. Okay, so again, um, I'm trying to use the basic numbers. Again, 100 watts, okay, that will go to 4 ohms minimum. Okay, you have to read the spec sheets. Do not, I mean, it's as easy as going to your computer, punching in, downloading the manual in a PDF format or whatever, and looking at it, okay, 100 watts, what is the least that the head will handle ohms-wise? Okay, it says 4 ohms minimum. Okay, so that means you can actually add one 4 ohm speaker to it. Or you can put two 8 ohm speaker cabinets to it. Staying with Marshall. Marshall makes tons of 8 ohm cabinets, or ca everybody does, makes cabinets that are selectable. And that will actually change the wiring from series to parallel so that all of a sudden all these 16 ohm speakers, all four of them, now become a 4 ohm cabinet. It just wired, changed from series to a parallel wiring via one little switch or the two 8 ohms side by side. Okay, so you can run, if you have a stereo amplifier that like mine, okay, that'd be great to have one cabinet underneath that amp. You had 8 ohms here because of two 16 ohm speakers and then 8 ohms here because of two 16 ohm speakers and I mic them both because I've got effects going back and forth, you know, delays going bang, 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 bang. Why? Because it sounds cool to me. It's always going to a mono signal out front, which is a whole different thing, which defeats the purpose here, but it sounds cool to me, which makes me want to play better, because it sounds better to me. So it's a psychological thing. Um, but when you go to record this sucker, the stereo spread is already there, so it's very handy to have. Um, so you got the 100 watt head, and it will go 4 ohms down. So again, you have your choice of how you want your sound to react, and that is by putting the correct wattage speaker there for how the wattage of the amp changes as you change your impedance. Impedance and ohms are the same thing. Okay, it's just a level of resistance and it's just quicker to spell ohms and better chance that you're going to get it right than impedance. Okay, they are the same word, they are interchangeable. Use them as you will. Um, so that your cabinet impedance might be 16 ohms. Okay. So you have a 16 ohm and a 16 ohm. What do you get? Put them together, you get 8 ohms. Okay, so your amp was running at 100 watts RMS at 16 ohms. So the manual says. Okay, now when you run it at 8 ohms, it will, by default, this is basically the way it goes, is goes up about another 3 quarter power wise. Okay, so you might be getting 175 watts now at 8 ohms. You read your thing and see where it goes. Some do, some go at less than that. You know, some go at more than that. Some of them do double. But um, if you have an accurate spec sheet, it will tell you what the amp puts out at each ohm rating. Okay, so now you got, okay, now I've got two 8 ohm cabinets. Now that takes you down to what? Four ohms. That's the least you're allowed to, that's the lowest you're allowed to take your amp down to safely without it overheating and burning up and start frying things. Okay, never go under the rated ohms. Never, ever, for any reason. Don't, don't even add a uh, cell phone uh, speaker to it. Don't add any more to it. Um, so check out that. And again, remember how you want your speakers to react and how many watts. You're going to have to carry a calculator with you when it comes to this because now you're learning something that your amp wattage output will change with every ohm um, configuration that you make, you know, any, any way you change it. So if you're running at 16 ohms, 100 watts, bang, you know that's cr true, if that's what it says. And then you're going down to f 8 ohms, because you flipped a switch or because you put two 16 ohm cabinets together, now you're at 8 ohms, what is the output to the 8 ohms, and now that I'm running 8 speakers, how much wattage is each speaker going to get? And do I want that natural breakup of the speakers? What's the wattage of each of my speakers? So am I running my amp to match the wattage of the speakers? 
so that it gets, you know, that natural breakup of the speakers, you know, it's like, what is more important to you, volume or the sound of that speaker being right on the edge because it has X amount of power going to each speaker. Again, if you have one 16 ohm cabinet, has 425 watt speakers in it, that's easy to add up with 100 watts. Each speaker is going to get 25 watts into 25 watt speakers. Dang, okay, they're right on the edge if you run the amp wide open, okay? So they're not getting that much wattage if you turn it down. If you don't have it on 11, then they're not getting 25 watts. Um, so it's not going to be bone shaking and getting that sound if you don't have it wide open. So you're defeating the purpose if you don't. That's why other people will get amps that are a lot less wattage. You know, 20 watt tube amps are very loud if they're wide open. And then they'll have through two 10 watt speakers just to get that sound, but at a much lower volume. You know, just, that stuff hurts, man. <laughs> Those big, huge stacks of yesteryear were just made for just huge stages, not for where most of us are gonna be playing. So you get amps, and use your brain. So now you get a 40 watt amp, two 20 watt speakers or whatever, and run it wide open, but then throw a blanket over top of it because it's still gonna be too loud. A 20 watt amp and a couple of 10 watt speakers, that'll, that's fine. You know, that'll give you the same exact effect and again, it's only for you to hear everything else. You put a mic in front of it, then it's hugely loud through the PA and through the whoever's monitor you want to put it through. So that is basically it. I hope that helped. And again, um, do understand that people are fooling you like crazy out there right now in every way, shape, or form with this peak rating as far as watts, uh, continuous watts, um, the... Uh, Peak Continuous Program is another word they use, and then RMS is what you want to go by for most guitar players because we always have. Um, like I said, it's just not a good rating system, but it's what you we, we what we use and what you're going to use for the rest of your life because that's just what we're geared at. Um, and no, it's not a good rating system. And yes, every time you change your speaker's configuration as far as the ohms, the amount of output that your amp actually puts out is different. So no, that 100 watt Marshall head you've had forever, because you add another cabinet to it, yes, it starts to put out more power, but it does not put out double power. You didn't know probably that it changes power, the output, because um, they didn't release that. Um, you just had to know it. You have to know um, electronics, engineering to some degree to know that that's just the way things are. Okay, uh, you introduce that different amount of resistance to it and it pumps up pump up the volume hey i know don't go there again um so get the specs they're available now um that's what the internet's about is information kids so all the old you know 60s and 70s marshall amps they will tell you now because they've put them on the meters and they'll tell you that quick how many watts they deliver at four ohms at eight ohms and at 16 ohms how much rms power your amp specific, specifically specifically should put out for your model. So if you're running a JCM800, find out what it is, RMS power output at all three um, impedance loads, 16 watts or 16 ohms, 8 ohms, 4 ohms. How much power is that putting out? And then divide that with a calculator into how many actual speakers you're running. Uh, and then you'll be able to see, well, all my speakers and use the same wattage of speakers. Don't mix and match wattage of speakers because they're going to sound different. If you use 25 watt speakers, use 25 watt speakers all the way, all the way across the board. Don't use, okay, I got a 50 watt speaker and a 12 watt speaker. Don't do that. Keep everything 100% uniform. Okay, everything's going to sound horrid if you're mixing and matching anything. If you use two different PA cabinets, it's going to sound like crap. Um, same with your, some people do like to use, you know, an EV speaker and a Celestian, you know, and whatever in some of these amps. Um, I don't buy into it, but some people do. Um, so that's basically it. That's ohms for you, for people who have been asking. Again, it took me an hour to explain it because um, I have hour-long tapes in here that I use. And I'll use them all, by God, to sit here and yak at you. But that's how it works. Um, I may have confused you more than ever, but I gave it a solid try. I could go back and do this again, but it'd be no different. <laughs> 
um, because there's so many different ways you could run this, but know that every time you do change the ohmage, you're changing your wattage too. So get that information, download it, print it, learn it, look at it, test it all out, see what your speakers sound like at different impedance configurations. So see what it sounds like at 8 ohms, see what it sounds like at 4 ohms if you have that many speakers laying around and they're all identical. See what, so see what they sound like at different configurations. Or if your cabinet is just selectable, see what your head sounds like you know, with um, 100 watts going through a, a, the 16 ohm load or all of a sudden you drop it down to 4 ohm load via a switch and now your amp is all of a sudden putting out you know, uh, 225 watts into 4 ohms. See what it sounds like with each speaker getting all that. It may be too much wattage for the speakers. Okay, so be careful. So use a calculator, do whatever you have to do. So you got four speakers divided by 225 watts. Well, my, two, my 25 watt speakers are not going to handle this. So I better add another cabinet and then that will bring it so that you have now eight speakers instead of four. And now each speaker with all that wattage will be able to be right on the edge. So you have to have a calculator. You're going to look like the nerd with the pocket protector, but it's almost um, needed if you can't think of it that quick, okay? So again, Scott Grove just trying to help some of you folks understand the way this works. It's um, There's an easy way to blow your crap up. It really is. It's very easy to blow your stuff up if you don't know what you're doing. And there is more information on this than you can shake a stick at all over YouTube here and just doing an ohm search and amplifier search and then everything you want to look up. It's all on the internet. That's what the internet's for. It's just information and this will be just a small cluttered you know, cluster F of, and I censored myself because I'm trying for some reason uh, to be better or less vulgar. Um, I know that will disappoint a lot of you and myself too. <laughs> As I get older, I get to be less me. But use the internet. Um, there's a million guys that are smarter than this, or more, I shouldn't say smarter because I'm, I'm brilliant but are a lot more eloquent and well-spoken, but I'm just the most probably down-to-earth guy that you're going to speak to as far as just, you know, this is what's going to blow your crap up, and this won't. Um, so use mine, look up other ways of doing it, but it will all come down to this if they know what they're talking about. If they say anything different, then I guarantee you they're wrong. But look up the specs of your amp, of your cabinet, how many watts it puts out at RMS is your wattage rating at each level. So again, at 16 ohms, 8 ohms, and 4 ohms. Those are the only three ohms or the impedance levels that you need to concern yourself with. That's all you're gonna deal with because you're never gonna go down to two ohms. Uh, some sound systems will, uh, but amplifiers will not. Uh, they just, they don't. They don't make them that way and they never will. Um, so. That being said, I'll shut up and uh, go upload this so uh, two or three people can actually enjoy it. Uh, everybody else will dismiss it because it's an hour long, I'm sure. And yes, I could have put all this in five minutes and been done with it, but then that wouldn't be me now, would it? Okay, so there's addressing the uh, questions of the day. So thanks for asking me, and instead of me just typing it all out and having to keep running out of room down here and the comments, Thought I'd do an hour-long video instead. So, <laughs> so now that you're more screwed up than ever, um, I'll talk to you later. And you can uh, write below here say, what the hell did you just talk about? And I'll say, I don't know, and we'll move on with whatever's next. Okay? Take care.